Hi everyone, it's Estelle here and I'm here just to talk about this awesome book that I came across. Mom, cover your ears, don't watch this video. Well, the name of the book is actually Come As You Are and it was written by Emily Nagowski. Gosh, I hope I didn't butcher her name. And I was actually really surprised how many things I didn't know. Things that you think that you would have learned when you were, I don't know, in sex ed maybe in sixth grade. I don't know when they start teaching these things. Ah, I'm so glad I don't have kids because I'm not really looking forward to this part. You know, when you're growing up, people always talk about like, oh, okay, is your hymen gonna break when you lose your virginity? And I found out you might not even have a hymen. Like what, where did it go? It just like ran up. No, actually you were born without one. It's just crazy that society says things like, oh, well, if you didn't bleed or if you didn't break, then you didn't lose your virginity. Like what the hell? What if I never even had one? That's so unfair. <laughs> so just so you know, you might not have one. Oh, and by the way, it doesn't break. It doesn't break like, you know, like you're popping a soda can and it's like, shh. <sighs> no, that's not what it does. I'm a squirter. Why can't I squirt? Why, what's wrong with me? Maybe I'm not turned on enough. I can't squirt. Did you know that some women biologically cannot squirt? So just so you know, you're not some like terrific porn star or not a porn star if you can't squirt out, you know, a hose full of freaking body stuff. Did you know that your vagina is actually just the canal that goes up, like where you stick a tampon? I mean, I knew that, but then, you know, you always kind of refer to the triangle as your vagina too. Apparently, it's your vulva. I kind of feel like maybe all my feminist friends or maybe every other girlfriend I know probably knows that, but I've been referring it to my vagina my whole life, so uh, it shall be my vulva from now on. Sounds cool. Sounds a little bit more, I don't know, classy. Volvo, like a Volvo. I actually hate Volvos. Never mind, scratch that. Apparently, only 15% of women have a spontaneous desire for sex. Everybody else, not into spontaneity. Everything for women is context, context, context. Just say it's 100 degrees out and you're walking and you're so hot and you can't wait till you reach this gas station. And that gas station is 72 degrees. When you walk in there, it's gonna feel like this huge fresh air. It's gonna feel like air conditioning. It's gonna feel so good. So that's what happens when it's 100 degrees out. But then flip that. What if it's 40 degrees out and you're freezing and you're walking, walking, walking until you get to this gas station, you can't wait to get there. And then you get there and it's 70 degrees, it's gonna feel like a little sauna. It's gonna feel so good and so warm. So that's context. You've got the exact same gas station, both times at 72 degrees, but depending on the context, which size you're on, it can be totally different feeling. Another example she uses is tickling. Like if someone's tickling you and it's fun, it's so fun and it's funny and you're laughing, but when you're annoyed at someone and they tickle you, it's like, don't fucking touch me. You know, sometimes your body does things that has nothing to do with whether or not you're actually aroused. It's actually kind of like, you know when boys in the fifth or sixth grade, some thing weird happens in class and they get erection? That's non-concordance. That's like, no, the ruler of falling did not turn me on. I don't know what's happening. Did you know that orgasms actually happen in your brain and not in your genitals? What? I don't think this one is gonna be that surprising to my girlfriends, but only 30% of girls can actually have an orgasm from vaginal intercourse. Everyone else, you know, magic button. So we all grew up with super controversial ideas around sex, whether that's religion or where you're from or your family. There's just so many different factors. And so just think that all your ideas about it are connected to that. I mean, I grew up in a country where I was told that using a tampon was losing my virginity. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, if I was to follow that, then I was a whore at, I don't know, 12 years old. I hope that this video gave you as much insight or maybe some surprising things that you didn't know before, and I hope you enjoyed it. It's 72 degrees out, and, okay, shit. So apparently, stress reduces sexual intro. So apparent. So apparently, stress reduces about 80 to 90 percent. I decided to read this book because you know it's really awkward to walk around the airport with a sex book. Actually, no. Well, that that's kind of enjoyable when people start reading over your shoulder. <laughs> ah.